So you're gonna to wanna to know what those requirements are. Now, I've never gone through this process, so again, my experience is limited, but a few things that might help. Research the, the international worker requirements for any countries that you're interested in looking in. And start uh, doing that research early in your process, as it may take a while to complete the process for any country. If you've identified a few companies within a given country, you might try reaching out to them and seeing if they can help navigate those permit and sponsorship challenges if you're hired on with them. You might also try reaching out to foreign government embassies and see if they have any resources or suggestions. Welcome to the Goobar Podcast, where we talk about building great software and helping others do the same. Here we have short chats about things like software development and building your ideal career in tech. We aim to foster a sense of community, connection, and inspiration so we can all continue to dream, learn, and create. Hey devs, and welcome back to another episode. How are you doing? Is your 2021 off to a good start? I sure hope that it is. I know I'm still working on building some new routines, but so far, pretty good. Today, I think we've got a pretty good episode for you. This week's episode comes from a listener question, so I want to start by just reading out and framing that question. And this listener has requested to stay anonymous, so I'm going to paraphrase a bit. So the question goes, a little bit something like this. I come from a third world country and there aren't a lot of opportunities for mobile developers yet. I have a degree in computing which covered a lot of software development topics including mobile development and Android. For me personally, I decided to try and master Android development, currently dedicated the next three months to learning newer technologies such as Kotlin, design patterns, Jetpack, etc. My question is what advice do you have to, for someone like me who would like to get a job in a developed country like the US, UK, Singapore, etc.? How do I stand out enough to be considered over their own citizens? I think that this is a really interesting question and I'm really excited to cover it and I'm really thankful that the, this user sent this question in. Quick plug, if you want to send in your questions for future topic ideas, you can do so at podcast at goobar.io. Quick plug over. So again, I think this is a great question. However, it's definitely a bit outside of my direct experience. I'm going to try and share some thoughts that are informed from my experiences interviewing, hiring, and interacting with devs from other countries. But I know that I'm likely to miss a lot of nuance of the international job search process. I'm going to do my best. And please, if you have thoughts on this topic, I'd love to learn more. So please feel free to send me a message on social media, or again, send me an email at podcast at goobar.io. You know, I've, I've never found a job internationally, so I've never gone through this. I only am drawing on my experiences, like I said, of uh, looking at resumes, of, of trying to hire devs, of working with devs that have gone through this process. So I'm going to try to break this down into kind of a few sections. So it's going to be kind of a, a rough timeline here that we're going to start by talking about making sure you have, you know, the, the requisite skills for the job you're looking for. Then we'll look about how to highlight those skills, how to get your name out there, how to focus your search, and then a few miscellaneous things just about working abroad in general. So we're going to start kind of at the beginning here. Start at the beginning of your job search. Now there's a lot to getting a job and having the the requisite skills is still central to that equation. So you want to make sure that you have the skills for the job you want. You know, in this case, the listener wants an Android development job. They've clearly 
called out a three-month learning plan focused on Android and other relevant subjects. So this is this is great. This is an awesome place to be. You know, whether it's six months, three months, a week, you know, continue to work and develop the skills you need for your job. There's no sense in worrying or stressing or planning for how to find a job if you don't actually have the skills to get that job. Now, if you're not sure what those skills are, which is totally understandable, I'd encourage you to reach out to somebody and ask, whether that's somebody that you've met locally, someone you already know online, maybe that's someone in a at a company that you want to work for, someone in the developer ecosystem. There's a lot of ways to contact people these days. As long as you are respectful and you're pretty clear in what you're asking or what you're looking for, I found you know most people are pretty comfortable and pretty willing to help you answer those questions or help guide you in your search. Now, as you're developing the required skills, you can start adding in some additional tasks to start helping you stand out and increase your chances of landing an international role. So as you're developing your skills and you're growing in what you're comfortable doing, you want to start thinking about how you can best highlight those skills. If looking to get a job abroad, you're really diving into an international talent pool. It becomes more important than ever to do anything you can to highlight your skills. Having some kind of relevant sample project to use as a portfolio really helps. It's so, 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 so important to be able to show that you have the skills that you'll be using on the job. In a sample project, especially if it's code on, say, GitHub or in Google Play or the Apple App Store or you have a live website somewhere, these are all things that are really easy for recruiters and for hiring managers and for engineers to go and look at and quickly review and get a sense of what you can do. So whatever sample project or sample projects you have, it's really important to try highlighting those on your resume, on GitHub, on LinkedIn, and anywhere else where you're trying to cultivate an online presence. This can include things like clearly calling out relevant topics that are related to the project, calling out the technologies and libraries and patterns you used to build the project. Additionally, if you have any relevant work experience, definitely want to call that out again in your resume and in, in LinkedIn and, and try and focus on any measurable outcomes that you can. And this doesn't have to be strictly, let's say, software development experience or Android experience if you're looking for an Android job. But let's say that you worked in a somewhat of a, a project management role completely unrelated. Let's say you worked for the public works department and you were tracking something to do with manhole covers or something. Maybe you had to go out and collect the, the locations of those. This is actually something I, I did once upon a time. That is very relevant. You know, you're, you're managing a project, you're breaking a project down you're completing work on time, you're maybe managing people. These are all skills that translate into, you know, an Android development role with a team at an international company. So anything you can do, any experiences that you feel are relevant, think about how you can highlight those and, and frame those in a way that shows how you think that is relevant towards the role you want. Now, again, back to the idea of focusing and, and highlighting on a project. You know, if you have high quality screenshots or recordings of your project, you know, include those in your LinkedIn profile, post about them on social media, make them easy to find on your blog or your, your website. You know, if you have blog posts, if you have tutorials you've recorded or, or talks you've given, make sure those are easy to find again, share them, you know, post them on your, on your profiles, make sure that you're sharing the work that you're doing. Anything you build, write, or record, you'll want to try and highlight in places where a recruiter might eventually check. As you're highlighting your work, you're going to want to start rolling that in then to the, the idea of just generally trying to get your name out there. This is where you're really starting to try and stand out from
from the crowd. So once you're thinking about how to highlight your experiences and skills, you'll want to start shifting more towards helping people discover and review those skills. Being active in developer communities, both local and online, can really help for this. This can help you meet developers, designers, managers. Those are the people that are then often connected to recruiters and HR folks that are more involved in hiring. So again, that's helping get your name closer to the people that might hire you. Being involved in conversations on LinkedIn, Twitter, on open source projects. These are all, again, good ways to help your name show up when recruiters are looking for developers. Sharing your work, sharing thoughts on development topics, sharing interesting challenges or solutions. All of these can help get your name seen by recruiters, especially on, on LinkedIn, where I think a lot of recruiters hang out. You know, you could share a few thoughts on an interesting resource you found on something maybe you wrote, use hashtags like software development, Android development, mobile development, iOS development, Kotlin, uh, Java, you know, things like that, things that people might be searching if you were looking to find a developer to hire. Kind of think about that. Put yourself in the position of the recruiter. What would you search if you were trying to find Android developers? And then think about how you can show up in those searches. The more you're interacting online, the more you're interacting in person, although that's hard to do right now with COVID, but imagine that we're in a non-COVID world again, in-person interactions really help, the more likely it is that someone will want to review your work. And since you've been working hard to develop your skills and showcase them, when you finally do have someone review your work, you improve your chances of a recruiter wanting to follow up with you for an interview. Now, a lot of the stuff that we've been talking about is pretty generic, I would say, to any job search. You know, I, I would share these same things to pretty much anybody looking to try and stand out and, and get a job. So now I'm going to shift to some of the things a little bit more relevant, I think, to the idea of finding a job internationally. So I think when applying to jobs and when chatting with recruiters, it's probably a good idea to ask about visas, uh, work permits, and international uh, remote work upfront. You know, if any of those things are going to be a deal breaker for you or the company, it's better to know that early in the process and avoid wasting anybody's time. It's also probably a good idea to focus your search on companies that are are more likely to sponsor visas and or more likely to be able to handle the tax and regulatory implications of operating abroad. This likely means that really early stage companies or, or other really small companies are out of the picture. It is challenging to sponsor international developers. It's challenging to do work overseas. And so a lot of smaller companies just don't do it because they don't have the, the resources available to do it. So this then leaves more of the, the later stage startups, mid-sized companies, and, and the really big, large established companies. Those are the ones going to be most likely to be able to support you in your international job search. Those types of companies might very well have their their sponsorship policies public somewhere where you can find them so you could do some quick searching to help find companies that do support that you might also look for more local or regional companies that operate with international partners the one that i'm familiar with is andela which is you know based in new york but they employ software engineers across africa and then connect those engineers with with teams operating in countries all around the world you know i i work in my in my current day job with a number of engineers from andela and, and they're awesome and we work together as if we are one team it's terrific and this kind of hybrid approach could be a great way to get experience working with international teams without needing to move or or get sponsorship or permits and the such now, finally, just a few uh, other miscellaneous things towards 
trying to find a, a job in another country as a software engineer or more specifically as an Android developer. So again, I've, I've kind of touched on it a number of times, but just to explicitly call it out, you know, before you can actually start a job in another country, there's likely to be some kind of work permit and or sponsorship required. So you're going to want to know what those requirements are. Now, I've never gone through this process. So again, my experience is limited, but a few things that might help. Research the, the international worker requirements for any countries that you're interested in looking in and start uh, doing that research early in your process as it may take a while to complete the process for any country. If you've identified a few companies within a given country, you might try reaching out to them and seeing if they can help navigate those permit and sponsorship challenges if you're hired on with them. You might also try reaching out to foreign government embassies and see if they have any resources or suggestions. If you speak multiple languages, it might help guide your search and help you stand out. You know, if you don't speak the primary language for a given country, it might be good to be aware of that potential challenge and consider whether that's still a place you want to work. And, and on the flip side, if you speak a language that's really in demand in a country, that could be a good way to help you stand out. And, and lastly, you might try doing some freelancing or contract work for those based in your target country. Developing relationships, building a portfolio, and gaining experience while working with people in that country could help you take the next step, uh, develop connections, and eventually get a job located within that country. So that's it for, for this and for exploring this question. And again, I want to send out a big thank you to the listener that shared this question. You know who you are. I thought this was super interesting and, and so relevant right now as the whole world is shifting to remote work and work continues to be more and more online. I think we're going to see more people wanting to expand the pool of companies that they might work for. I hope that this discussion was helpful. I know, again, like I said, my experience is limited in this regard. If I missed anything, really helpful or important here. One, I'm my apologies. And two, I would love to learn more about this so I can be better informed in the future. So if you're willing, I'd love to chat about your experiences getting a job abroad. If you enjoyed today's episode, leave a review and be sure to subscribe for future chats about software development and career. And remember, if you have a question or topic idea, I'd love to hear from you. And you can send those in to podcast at goobar.io for your question or idea to possibly be featured in a future episode. Thank you so much for listening. Remember to dream, learn, and create, and I'll catch you all in the next episode. Until next time, devs.